Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Race versus the community. We would go racing with some A class Utes. Our first event at the Hockenheim Full Circuit, my Ute uh, didn't like the curbs at all. In fact, I brushed the curb in the back end, got very, very sideways. I mean, these are pretty damn oversteery to begin with, but uh, yeah, in particular, mine was uh, not a massive fan of the curb. It wasn't a massive fan of going in a straight line with cold tyres. I'll be honest, I think I might have needed a bit better tuning or a bit more grip. I did struggle a little bit. Either way, I had a very good initial launch, but uh, would end up in third after all of the opening shenanigans. Uh, as you can imagine, A-Class, these are not the easiest vehicles to... I say not the easiest vehicles to drive. It's very easy to get caught out by the Utes. Of course, rear-wheel drive, very little weight over the back, and up in A-Class, you will, most of them certainly would be running around five, 600 horsepower. So there was plenty of sliding around. Plenty of sliding around indeed. I mean, you saw how, how wheelie the uh, grey ute got, although he was able to stay far enough away by the time they got down to turn one to offend off. I was continuing to come under fire, my third place under threat, as uh, more Fords were buzzing around behind looking for a way past. The blue and white truck got up alongside. I tried to fight as best I could. I got myself on two wheels, which is never particularly helpful in uh, yeah, trying to hold that and couldn't quite stay alongside. And I still have a pretty good run up towards the hairpin, still tucked right in the slipstream. The truck now in third is always going to go defensive around the outside the hairpin is difficult to pull off. Your best bet might be trying to get a cutback underneath, but the white and blue truck does a very good job. Covers the inside, sort of parks the truck on the apex. I have nowhere to go, and he's got a bit better drive as well out of that hairpin. Have to concede the position for now. And it certainly would be me that was involved in the best of the battles. A little mistake would drop me down behind a uh, Holden and sort of slot in between a Holden and another one of the Fords. The Sandman was of the very oversteery and slightly erratic variety. Not the most pleasant vehicle to drive from the looks of it, certainly. I'd have a crack up the inside into turn two. Get the place, although <laughs> the orange Sandman determined to try and hold on me. That's sideways out over the curb. Full throttle as you come out of that corner. The Holden not quite able to make that one work. I would keep myself ahead. I'd get the overlap and sort of move across back to the inside, getting ready to defend on the run up into the hairpin. I was a little early on the brakes. The Holden holds me right down to the inside. The Sandman does an amazing job, actually, of managing to get that one to work on the outside. There's a good run off of the corner. I can see I'm going to be driving into an ever-closing wedge. Choose to lift off and have to let the Holden go. For the moment, you know, for, for the time being, there's always another opportunity. And certainly, <laughs> immediately at the next corner, the Sandman uh, runs a little bit wide. Just misses the apex ever so slightly. Once you lose it one quarter, you're then a little bit affected for the next quarter. It's a little bit slow. Is out across the curves. Suddenly, my Ford is right back alongside. Uh, we're going to have a look at, well, a rather nasty fast turn, but there is space. I get the Ford alongside, get the move completed. There's a cross back from the cutback, sorry, from the Holden, trying to go around the outside. I actually bump the curb. That just sort of sends my truck a little bit towards the middle of the road. We get a bit of a touch between the pair of us. The back of my truck is sliding around. I give the Holden a bit of a nudge. The Holden gets away with it. The Sandman's back up a position. The grey Ford is now having a look at the inside of me, although I get a very good run out of the final corner. It was manic, and that was a fight for, well, fifth place, essentially. It's absolutely manic, and while the rest of the field was, well, relati I say relatively mundane, not a lot was going on compared to the big fight that we were having over fifth place here, and it, it continued. The Sandman's turn to be nice and defensive on the inside into the hairpin. I go for the cutback this time around very, very near, and you get a clonk from the grey truck. Of course, lots of different lines through that hairpin, and when you go for that cutback, you do take a considerably different, or consider a wonkier line, perhaps, than some other trucks. The great truck did a really good job of uh, noticing where I was trying to put my Ford. It didn't quite work for me, though, in terms of getting the pass on the Sandman. It's certainly worth a try, but it uh, didn't quite get that pass completed. I actually fell back a little bit, although the Sandman continues to be on the rather difficult uh, side of, of, of drivability, shall we say. <laughs> Up towards the hairpin we go, and I can close in again as it gets some wheel spin. It wibbles across the road. I have a big dive up the inside. Can't pull the Ford up in time. The Holden's going to cut back for the exit, although 
on that wider line, you can still get a pretty damn good drive out of the hairpin, and you would, of course, be on the inside for the penultimate corner. I park the Ford on the apex, make sure that there's no way somebody can dive underneath, although a big amount of wheel spin, a big slide from the Ford is not exactly what I was wanting, but I would finally get the truck moved up a position. As we came on to the final lap, the top three were kind of closing up a little bit. Uh, the Fords in third and fourth were probably the fastest cars, having had to work their way through the pack, but were running out of time to make their way up. Fourth place making a little mistake at one point and dropping it back from this group. The third placed Ford here was uh, having a try down into the hairpin. It's a big, big dive up the inside. The uh, Holden, the Malou tries to hold him to the inside, realised it wasn't going to be able to do it. They both end up taking a little bit of a wonky line in the end, but the Ford did the job uh, getting the pass done. The Malou is right on his bumper up towards the next corner. This time it's the Ford's turn to defend very, very heavily. They both kind of nudge their way through, but the Pursuit Ute is uh, up into that second place at the front, and it would be a Blue Ford that led pretty much from the, from the get-go. As I said, the Fords that were now second and fourth were going very, very quickly, but were not going to have the lap times. To, we're not going to have the lap numbers, I should say, sorry, to catch the leader. So it was going to be a Ford 1-2 for the Pursuit Ute to Malou in third with a, another Pursuit in fourth. Unfortunately for me, well, in our little battle we continued to fight, I would eventually lose out to the Sandman on the final lap. I was trying desperately to find a way to uh, get back past, but I was also coming under pressure from the uh, Grey Ford as he has a look on the exit of the hairpin, not quite able to uh, get alongside. Both me and the Sandman are wiggling our way through those S's towards the final turn. Now, I thought I was okay. However, I turned it a little bit too hard through the final corner, a huge slide from a Ford, and I'd lose out on the run to the line, demoting me to a seventh place. But we had a real good fun battle. We had a real good fun battle, and definitely the most exciting battle on track. To the podium of Foxy Gaming HD that uh, would take victory. Miri in second, with a Bevismeister in third. Yeah, a little bit of a lonely race, other positions at Hockenheim. Fantastic race for me. Race number two, and I continue with Forza's making up for its run of terrible grid spots for me, as this time I would start from the second position. Unfortunately, the car that would lead the early laps does not show up on the replay, which is always fun in games. We did have a few cars missing from the Hockenheim replay as well. Yeah, either way, we'd be off to the, the Sebring full circuit. A bit of a nasty track, actually. A bit of a nasty track. There are some very long straights. Of course, you're going to want plenty of straight line speed in your ute. But then you've got plenty of these much narrower, much more technical, much more technical sections. Although, to be fair, I think a lot of the utes in these in these races were actually fairly similarly built. Most of them. There wasn't anything like absurdly, ridiculously fast running in uh, in most of these. The purple Ford here, trying to go around the outside of a Malou, not quite able to make that one work. I hadn't quite got stopped in time for the hairpin, opting to uh, use the escape road, utilise the escape road to uh, recover my vehicle as best as possible. Still, the purple Ford is having a look. He has a go up the inside. The yellow car can't quite get across to cover. As the Ford gets alongside, the pair of them get connected with the uh, front corner of one, the rear corner of another, causing a little bit of an issue, I'll say thank you very much, and uh, make back the two positions that I lost from my off at the hairpin. In the end, the purple truck would get the move done. Actually, everybody did very well to sort all of that out before falling off the road. It's not an easy thing to be... I say to be, to be dealing with. Uh, we also had a lot of issues with liveries loading for whatever reason on car. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of orange sandmans around the place. This one uh, in particular coming under threat from the Hoonigan Utes up towards the second corner. It's a big dive from the from the Hoonigan Holden there uh, to get the pass completed. It's kind of a shame. Like I I quite like. I think the Hoonigan Ute is the best looking of the Utes. It's a shame that we don't have a normal version of that car. I couldn't get a tune to work. I wanted to build one. I couldn't get one to be dri any anywhere vaguely drivable. So I gave up. With uh, <laughs> with all of that, they they were quite awkward to get working. I had made a mistake, clipped the tyre bundle, and uh, dropped myself down the order. Was keen to try and redress that. My Ford was 
pretty decent. Still struggling. I oh, was struggling a fair bit with understeer, but uh, uh, well, understeer through most of the quarters and then sudden snappy oversteer. Always a fun combination of things to uh, have to deal with. I'd work my way back past one of them and lose a better run onto that long back straight. Can be very, very useful indeed as I continue to not learn my lesson and run very, very close to <laughs> tire bundle. Didn't realise the tire bundle stuck quite out as much as it actually does down there. And the one plus side with the Hoonigan Utes is that they did tend to be very, very, very fast down the straight. So this one uh, is having a go up the inside in towards the hairpin, although not the easiest things to get stopped. He does manage to get it pulled up in time before ending up on the grass. However, the Ford is going to have a look back underneath. Doesn't quite have the acceleration to match that Holden through there. He's got another Ford for company. There's a Malou chasing this little group of cars down the hooligans out sideways, almost on the grass. Thankfully not a puddle of doom, although struggling immensely to get that vehicle pulled up in time. One of the Fords is going to come soaring past. The other Pursuit Ute is on the outside, uh, trying to get to the inside for the next corner, which indeed he does. The hooligan runs out of road with a wheel on the grass and a wheel on the curb. Amazingly gets it stopped where you see the <laughs> Pursuit Ute in the background go trundling off. Does well to get it stopped before doing that, or they gift the place to the Malou. I was chasing down the leader. I was actually got an okay amount of speed, although I was being caught by the vehicle behind. Trying to go for the cutback through the long final corner. One of the bumps catches me out as I tried to put the power down. Big slide from me yet again would drop me into a third place. Not as much time lost as could have been, but... Uh, yeah, silly, silly mistake by me, and it wasn't long. The next lap, the uh, blue Ute would go chasing off after the leader. Now, this particular Ford was very good through the corners, one of the better handling cars through the corners. Now, we were both faster than it when it came to the straights, but, uh, yeah, its speed through the corners was immense. The uh, lead car doing his best to try and try and fend off, but it was not quite going to uh, not quite going to really be enough as they head up towards turn two. The blue Ford is alongside and would get the pass completed and we were not even going to be remotely within range when it came to the to the next straight. I, uh, on this final lap, would proceed to close into the back of the uh, of the purple Ford, again, continuing to try and find a way past. And it turns out I have a favourite overtaking spot that I never knew about here at Sebring. On towards this back straight, you wait for the lead car to go a little wide of the apex, you sneak your car up the inside, and it helps when you've got a decent amount of acceleration and a decent amount of straight line speed, and that would be enough. Both of our cars fairly evenly matched in terms of uh, straight line speed, in fact, here. But that better run from me was, was enough and I could defend into the final corner. And no silly sideways antics for me. It would be a 1-2-3 for Fords this time out. None of us really had an answer for the leader, however. Much better handling Ute, uh, able to carry so much more corner speed. While our straight line speed was helpful in some instances, yeah, far too quick. For the for the rest of us, I'm a little annoyed. I made a silly mistake to a loser position, but I don't think if I'd if I hadn't done that, I don't think I would have been able to fend off the the position. This this car was simply far too fast for us to to deal with. Fourth place would actually be a very close fought for battle. These guys would run in kind of a trade for a long period of the race. This would be fourth, fifth, and sixth, all <laughs> with the Maloos. So yeah, a one, two, three for Ford, a four, five, six for, for well, HSV Holden. Uh, not such a good day for the uh, for the Holden fans. We head up towards the final corner. It would be the uh, purple Maloo here. Similar strategy to me. Get a good run down that straight. Admittedly, doesn't get the out acceleration quite done, but does get to the inside of the final corner. A lot of fire, just almost constant fire coming out the back of that purple car. The uh, black and yellow goes for the cutback through that final turn. Can't quite get it to work. Uh, good move on the final lap to uh, get a fifth place there to the podium. Uh, BM in Tice would take a victory. I would have to settle for second, managing to overtake Stevie on that final uh, final run to the last corner. A good, a good round for Ford. The final race of the day, we would head to the Hockenheim GP circuit. Uh, turn one is always interesting. Turn one is always interesting. Down to here. On the most part, though, everybody would make their way through okay. You might have noticed it. There was one of the classic Utes in, uh, <laughs> in this particular race. There was a very sideways moment for somebody as we run through these opening corners. Plenty of side-by-side -side action around here. You will often see a, a lot of uh, different lines being taken 
through these opening corners as these two uh, Maloos go to battle. Eventually, the Red Bull car would prevail. Now goes chasing after one of the Sandmans. The Sandman goes defensive on the inside. Doesn't really matter to the Maloo. That's going to go all the way around the outside, and then you will get the inside for the second part of this section while a Pursuit U moves its way up into a third place. Yeah, fairly, fairly busy start to the day, or to the, to the race, as you could imagine. Now, I had not been so lucky with my grid spot in this one, being back to my normal Forza starting place of at the back, thanks to the random grids. Uh, at least they were being random today, which is, which is an improvement. Uh, so I had plenty of overtaking to be doing. A bit of a scary moment uh, through the S is when the cars ran wide, clipped the dirt or clipped the gravel, and as soon as you do that, your car just stops. You lose so much momentum when you end up on that dirt. Uh, we all did a very good job of managing to avoid the car. Uh, it's, it's very easy to just run over whoever's got in trouble uh, completely by accident as they suddenly slow over a blind corner. I was being pressured by <laughs> a uh, Pursuit Ute once more. They would have to try to go around the outside towards the chicane. Now, you can do this, uh, you know, outside for the first part, you get the inside for the second part however I managed to keep enough speed maintain enough speed through all of that that I would keep hold of the position ignore the slightly lagged out car on the final corner yeah it, it, it's a hectic start and certainly a hectic start when you start right at the back of the pack uh, second place we would have a Malou running in however coming under increasing pressure from one of the Pursuit Utes. And I'll be honest, the Pursuit Ute was pretty much the one that you wanted to have here. They were <laughs> they were, they were, were very, very good. They were very good indeed. The Maloo tried to fight off, didn't quite get across to the inside to defend in time. Sure enough, the Ford would scythe up that inside and get the pass done. The Maloo, realising it was beaten and, and rather going for sort of stupid, crazy levels of, of aggressive defending, decides not to lose too much time, let the car go and focus more on his own race. Further back with a few vehicles getting in uh, little bits of trouble early on. Uh, there would be a big angry pack of quite fast cars trying to recover, but quite fast cars that would then all get stuck fighting one another. Included in that lot was the classic Ute that would find itself around the outside at one of the fastest corners on the track, on the grass, manages to just about hold it, manages to almost have a go up the inside into the chicane, despite having been on the grass almost in the braking zone. Of course, the classic Ute is very, very light and therefore very very fast accelerating, but very difficult to drive through the corners. Ends up out all sorts of wide. The black Pertec Malou making up two places in one quarter and now trying his best to uh, get another car on the run down towards turn one. And he does have the inside and a little bit higher top speed. The classic Ute is uh, trying to get involved. One of the Fords can't quite pull it up in time, trying to look for an outside line and will lose a whole heap of positions. The black car is to the front of this pack. The classic Holden's having a sniff again up the inside. Won't have the corner grip, but is hoping to just have the acceleration. Just that brute force out of the corners. A little bit of a lunge on the blue Malou. Gets a big, big sideways moment, although then slides up in front of the Holden as they're both fighting and wiggling. It's four wide as we go down the back stretch. The uh, Both the classic Ute and the Malou, the camera's following, deciding they didn't really really want to have to try and fight that one on the grass. A Hoonigan Ute and something else found their way past. It was manic in the mid-pack. Uh, I was continuing to work my way up through the order. and I was bringing the uh, White Pursuit Ute with me. This, the fight over fifth place. Uh, I'm trying to have a look around the outside into turn one. Now, never likely to complete the pass fully around the outside of turn one. The hope is to still be alongside by the time you get to turn two, which I hand the grip to be able to do the white. <laughs> the white Ford is uh, basically keen to follow any sort of gap that I make when I overtake one of these cars. The white Ford very, very keen to have a go as well. We were three wide, a little bit of bumping between all of us and a fair bit of sideways from our selection of cars. But uh, we all make it through. Uh, yeah, they were pretty pretty bad. Very very easy to upset the rear of these. It does not take much. It's very easy to get them sliding on your own, of course, if there are cars around. The smallest of taps gets them very sideways, but they are at least fairly controllable, fairly easy to, uh, to regain control of them should things start going a little bit awry. Perhaps of all of the races we did with these Utes, Nürburgring was the best for overall overall action. I actually had three very exciting races. Uh, however, other places in the field were a little bit uh, a little bit lonely at times. Here at, Ho at Nürburgring, sorry, there was more 
in terms of on track action. Uh, this, I think, outside the top 10 at this stage in the race, but it doesn't matter whatever position you are uh, you are in, everybody's fighting as much as they can. The gold and black cars fight each other so much, they let the Pertec car around on the final corner. Uh, they are yeah, so busy affecting one another's race that they've actually not really done too much in terms of their position with each other, but the Pertec car is able to uh, round up the pair of them and actually get a fairly big gap by the time we get down towards turn one. The Fords having a look at the inside into the first corner just manages to get it stopped. The gold and, and green, an interesting colour combination, uh, goes for the cutback, but you'll be on the outside for that second quarter, and it's a tough, tough long way around there as the Malou gets some more sideways action uh, out of that. At the front, a fairly, fairly lonely race, a fairly calm race for the uh, for the leader in this one. Certainly started towards the front, able to get to that lead early on. Again, running a clean race, staying out of trouble and being able to run some very, very quick lap times is, is so important in these. If you get caught up in traffic, you have the quickest car in the field, but if you get caught up in traffic, very difficult to do too much about all of that. It uh, would be uh, Muri who would take the victory here in Pega in second place. Two in nine tails, we'll get a Malou on to the podium. Again, another one-two for the Fords. Certainly, certainly the Pursuit Ute was the way to go really here. Uh, it has a lower starting PI than the, the likes of the Malou. You can do more to it in terms of upgrades and you can focus more heavily uh, in terms of in terms of handling. My Ford uh, did not handle quite well enough. I, I If I was to do it again, I would build my Ford a little bit differently. I would focus a little bit more on handling. Um, certainly you could get some fast Malou's, do not get me wrong. You could get some fast Malou's. Uh, however, in general, yeah, the Pursuit Ute was probably the one that uh, the one that you wanted. The Classic Ute could be unbelievably fast accelerating, but it's just the lack of control that uh, was the was the difficulty with that one. And the Hooligan Ute, again, you just couldn't really get enough handling uh, in that one to, to, fully, to fully work. That, though, is going to be it for this week's Versus the Community. The next one is going to be held on Thursday, the 26th of April. We are going to go racing with B-Class cars from the Early Sport Touring category. That is not built to that category's homologation rules. It is just cars from that category being built to B-Class. If you want to take part in that, then you can sign up via our forums. There will be a link to that in the description. Find the Ferraris first in the community section, and you can sign up in there. However, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time... Uh, goodbye.